it's Angel Bain, and this is episode 88 of My Author's Diary. I am an author of crime thrillers for women, and every week I take you through the ups and downs that I go through as I try to write and publish new books. So don't forget to click the subscribe button or follow me if you haven't done so already. Now, this week has been the first full week of The Unexpected Hero with my editor. Um, we've been touching base uh, throughout the week and it's going really well so far. No plot issues have been discovered, so I'm really, really happy about that. And in the meantime, I have had to move on with the rest of my novel writing plan. So the next thing that was up on my writing plan was to write a holiday romantic suspense book for Julian and Nina. Now, the first thing that I had to solidify in my mind is that this will not be a part of the Hero in Paradise series. Um, it is not gonna be book five in the series. It is basically going to be a standalone book that anybody who has not even met Julian and Mina yet, they can use it to be introduced to those two characters and just read a standalone romantic suspense story without having to have read the four books before that. So it's really gonna be um, a lot of conscious effort on my part to make sure that I'm not doing spoiler alerts of the things that happen in the Hero in Paradise series but still giving you enough information about Julian and Mina to kind of introduce those characters and then take them on a brand new journey as part of the holiday romantic suspense. And again, be able to um, enjoy that book as a standalone book without having to read the other four books because I'm like, oh my goodness, right? If I release the book and people are like, but there are four other books in this series that I need to read, huh? I just want to read the holiday book. Because maybe I'm just in the mood to read a holiday book. I don't have to read the other four books so I understand what's going on in the holiday story. So I made that decision that er, I'm going to draw the line. It is not a part of that series. It's going to be its own standalone book. And you don't have to know anything about what happens in the Hero in Paradise series to read and enjoy Julian and Mina's holiday romantic suspense book. So getting to what I'm talking about this week, dream zoning. Okay, so I'm stealing the term dream zoning from K.M. Whalen. She has the Helping Authors Become Writers podcast and um, website. I'm a huge fan of hers. I have pretty much most of her books um, and she really helped me to understand kind of the um, story structure. She was the, the, you know, her books were the first that I bought around story structure and outlining the novel. And they really helped to form the foundation basis of how I write right now. She did a podcast and a blog post back in November of 2020 talking about dream zoning. And as I was listening to it, I was like, <gasps> I do that. Like I, I do exactly what she was describing and she called it dream zoning. So. For those of you who don't know what dream zoning is, it is a state of intentional daydreaming about the novel or the writing project that you are about to embark on. And it really is about trying to get yourself in the zone so that you can really allow your mind to stop the kind of rational thought process of your mindset and just go into another state where you allow all kinds of possibilities to come into place. And it's more of a, like a, you know, you can think of it as a meditative state, but it really is blocking out kind of the, um, no, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. No, 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 no. Like you, you block that part of your thoughts and you allow yourself to just free flow in this dreamlike state where you are exploring your stories and the what ifs of what could be in your story. So as I was thinking about, okay, well, this is the way that I'm supposed to uh, plot, brainstorm, plot, and outline the holiday romantic suspense book. And I gave myself one week because this book is supposed to be a novella. <laughs> yeah, probably not gonna be a novella. Probably gonna be a little bit longer than a novella. Um, but I'm shooting for no more than 50,000 words. So it's kind of in between my short books I'm trying to do for the um, holiday sweet romances and a novella length. So, you know, between that 30 to 60,000 word length. And so when I was thinking about, okay, brainstorming and trying to plot the ideas for this, normally what I would do is I kind of do dream zoning during the day as I'm doing other stuff. And then at night I brained up and I type out all of the ideas that I had thought of during the day. And so what happens doing that each day with all of my different thoughts, I waste a lot of time typing stuff that I'm I end up not using. And so then I'm like, oh, 
Especially if you figure out the next day that you don't need 90% of the stuff that you typed the day before. You're like, okay, well, I just wasted that time. I like really wasted time. So this week I decided to take a different approach because I'm like, well, look, you know you do dream zoning. So instead of documenting everything at the end of each day, allow yourself to continuously dream zone until you believe that you've gotten to a point where you have the good skeletal bones of your story in place. And so that is what I have been doing this week. I did four full days of dream zoning to try to get the skeletal bones of my story in place. So first let me explain to you when I do dream zoning. So I am the type and Kay, and this is where Kay and Waylon and I kind of deviate, but it's okay, I'm not mad at her, I'm not mad. She can do her thing, I'm gonna do my thing, right? So we kind of deviate on this because I don't set a specific time or I don't have to set an atmosphere or an environment to do dream zoning. I do primarily do my dream zoning in the in-between times, the in-between of me doing something else. So like, for example, I have been, you know, geeking out on Australian Open tennis this week. So at six o'clock, like I am in front of my TV watching Tennis Channel or ESPN2, watching tennis all the way to about midnight or one o'clock in the morning until my eyes just like can't stay open, right? So in between matches, in between during the commercials, if a match is boring or if they're showing some people I don't care about, that I allow myself to dream zone in those different time periods. Now, another time where I find myself dream zoning is actually as I'm taking in the creative works of others. So I will dream zone as I'm watching my soap opera. Something's happening on the soap opera, uh, you know, in the soap opera, and it may just spark, it may just be like somebody picking up a pencil and then may spark something in me and then I will allow myself, you know, to press pause or maybe I don't press pause and I allow myself to dream zone whatever that trigger to me for my particular story and I just start thinking about it and I start playing out different scenarios because again, for me, developing my plot um, and outlining my novels, it is like a movie running through my head. Like I see the scenes, I see people acting out the scenes in my head and the dialogue is acting out. So it is like a movie running in my head. And so I find that I will go off on the tangent dream zoning as I am watching movies, as I'm watching soap operas, and sometimes as I'm listening to somebody else's audiobook. So if I'm listening to an audiobook and it's getting to a part and it's kind of dull to me, I will Fit, you know, find that like, oh, I've kind of gone off and I'm thinking about my own story. And I'm like, wait a minute, what just happened? So listening to or watching some other creative form of entertainment absolutely sparks my own creativity. And I will find that I will start dream zoning on top of that and maybe stop paying attention to that. But that's when a lot of good ideas start to come to me. And then probably the other place where I do a lot of dream zoning is as I am getting in the bed and trying to fall asleep, I will allow myself to dream zone my story. So I start, you know, thinking through things about the story and that's some time to dream zone. And then, you know, all of a sudden I'm sleeping, I'm waking up the next morning like, oh, oh, okay, this morning, right? Okay, so that that's when I dream zone. Now let me talk a little bit about how I do my dream zoning. So there's two ways that I start dream zoning and two ways that I kind of do my dream zoning. The one, the one way I've already kind of talked about is if something else that I'm doing or experiencing sparks an idea and then I just let myself float. Like I don't cut it off. I say, oh, okay, let me think about that. Well, what if that happened and what if this happened, you know? And then the movie starts to play in my head and it's, it's, that's the spontaneous. Um, part of dream zoning for me. And so that's like some external trigger triggers me into that dream zoning state and I start thinking about my story and some, you know, what ifs for the story. So I can do it spontaneously or I can do it intentionally. And usually when I'm intentionally dream zoning, I always start with a question. And so I'll pose a question to myself and then I'll start to see well, what ideas start to come to me. And it really is about just being still and saying, okay, what's coming to me right now? What's coming to me? And so that's kind of the process that I go through. And then as the ideas start to come, different questions start to, to play out as I start thinking of different things. And then the what ifs. And so I'll let myself, you know, dream zone of some ideas about ooh, something that can happen in the story, you know, start to take shape. Then I start to ask the well, what if, what if something different happens? What if something happens later? What if something happened before this situation? And then the other question that I ask myself is, why 
would this happen? Why would this person think this? Why would this person do this? Do you really have a good reason why this would occur? And so it's those those kind of sets of questions that, that I keep tossing around over and over and over in my head as I'm doing this dream zoning. And it helps really to make the story solidify and start to take shape in my mind. And so what I decided to do this week for the Holiday Romantic Suspense book for Julian and Mina is that I said, okay, you know what? You're not writing nothing down, right? So you keep dream zoning and it was a game. It was like, it was a challenge almost because if the idea that I came up with in the dream zone state was good enough, then I wouldn't forget it. So it was, it was all about what is sticking, continue to stick with me over multiple days that I'm not forgetting that this should be a part of the story. If I came up with an idea and I thought, oh my goodness, this is such a good idea. This is something that I want to do. And then the next morning I was like, wait, what was the idea I came up with? That means it was, it's not a winner. It's not a winner. And so after four days, of dream zoning pretty much you know in between different stuff and doing a lot of dream zoning on yesterday friday night i was able to sit down in plotter and start typing out what i remembered and what i believed the story should really be about and it does it, it to me the things that rose up and i can remember some of the iterations of the ideas but what i started documenting it was the best of the best that i could think of in the four day period right now that's not to say y'all know how i do I know how I do. So I'll probably end up writing half of the book and then some other great idea will come to me later and I might go back and tweak some stuff. But as of right now, I really do believe stopping myself from documenting anything and just allowing the dream zoning to continue over multiple days before I you know, wrote the notes. I think that really allowed the best of the best ideas that I have um, at this moment to be documented in my current outline. So that's where I am. I am supposed to start writing this novel on Monday. President's Day, which we're expecting a massive winter storm to show up this week in Houston. Like it is frigid cold. Like you see, I'm like, I'm so cold. And I'm like, why? Why groundhog that you have to see your shadow? Why? We were having such good weather. And the only thing that is helping me to just deal with it is that the forecast for next weekend after the winter storm, 70. Give me back to normal Houston February weather. I don't want to have this, you know, coldest week we have ever had in the past 30 years. And so I'm like, no, no. But you know, it's like, how do you stop it? Right. So um, I'm not quite sure if I'm going to be ready to start writing on Monday. But I think, you know, the things that I need to do to make to to prepare myself for that is finish documenting kind of the outline and the plot of the story that I came up with in the dream zone, and then just see, can I plot out the first two acts of scenes? Can I just lay out in order how many, you know, what the scenes should be for the first two acts? And if I can get that done, the first two acts, then I'll go ahead and start writing on Monday. If I'm struggling with that, then I have to wait till I get to that point before I start writing. This book, again, I'm targeting 50,000 words. So for me, you know, when I write the 90,000 word books, they, um, in my plotting outlining phase, that is 13 chapters per act. That's how I outline. I outline 13 chapters per act. And that is pushing me to the 90 to 95,000 word of a, an original manuscript, which normally gets whittled down um, through the whole editing process and cutting and all that kind of stuff to 80 something thousand words at the end of the day. So for me to ensure that this book does not end up being 90,000 words, I cannot plot 13 chapters per act. I decide that you can only plot six chapters per act. So I will have to see, can I plot out 24 scenes for this book and be ready to start writing on Monday? And I will fill you in on the answer to that question next week. So if you want to continue to keep up with me and all the ups and downs that I go through as I try to write and publish new books, click the subscribe button. Then don't forget to click the little silver bell so you won't miss when I'm doing a video and I will see you next time.